Um, I think the thing to keep in mind in the way I talk about everything sales related is I am a trained scientist. Um, and so I think about things from sort of a process and inputs and outputs perspective, which is called systems thinking. And that's kind of the lens with which I approach everything that I do. This is the Agency Profit Podcast, the podcast for agency owners that want to run a more profitable business that doesn't depend on them. Introducing your host, CEO and co-founder of Parakeeto, Marcel Petipaw. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Agency Profit Podcast. I am particularly excited about today's episode because I've brought somebody on the show that I've had the pleasure of working with now for several months. As some of you may know, if you've creeped me on LinkedIn, I am the chief operating officer fractionally at an agency in San Francisco called Goldfront. And there's a person that joined this agency recently that has had a massive impact. Since this person has joined, average deal size is up over 230%, average billable rate is up over 50%, and we're not even halfway through Q3, it's September 3rd today as we record this, revenue is already up over 40% year over year. This person's name is Liston Witherill, and he's been making it rain at Goldfront. And I've had the pleasure of watching firsthand what that process looks like. I actually got to step in and do some sales uh, for a brief period while he was out taking care of his newborn baby. And I got to look at what the secret sauce that he brought to the agency is. And I'm super excited to have him on today to share some insight into how he thinks and, you know, all of the things that he's learned from not only doing this at Goldfront, of course, but teaching other agencies for a long time before that how to do it. He's the founder of Serve Don't Sell, the creator of the Serve Don't Sell method. And he works with expert service providers like designers, accountants, agency owners, consultants and coaches who are great at delivering their service but need help selling it. That's what he was doing before he came and joined Goldfront. He also has an amazing podcast, Serve Don't Sell, and has an upcoming book, which you'll wanna stay tuned to hear more about. So with all of that, um, oh, also the host of the Modern Sales Podcast, sorry, and publishes articles on his blog that you definitely wanna check out, some incredible thought leadership there. So all of those things, very exciting. Listen, thank you for being here today. Quite the intro, let's see if I can live up to it. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> my pleasure to be here. Always so modest. So I've given everyone a little bit of context listing on your background and what you do, but I'd love to give you an opportunity to do that in your own words. So what set me on this path is um, I'm a college dropout originally, dropped out of college at 19, went back to school much later after pursuing a music career, and then I got a master's degree in environmental science and management from the UCSB Bren School. Um, from there, I went into consulting focused on uh, environmental science. Um, we, I was selling biology services and consulting to real estate firms in the Bay Area. That business moved very slow for me. Um, it was not a good fit uh, culturally, I would say for me. I like things that move a little bit faster. And so I've been doing consulting and marketing and sales work for the last seven years before I was taken off the market by Goldfront, which they didn't do to me. I agreed to, obviously. Um, so yeah, prior to Goldfront, I was helping companies with sales training and sales consulting, doing things like building out their sales messaging, building out sales playbooks, uh, training their teams on how to sell effectively, and in particular in highly ethical and more persuasive ways than they were before, um, and never manipulative ways. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. That's how I got here. And, um, I think the thing to keep in mind in the way I talk about everything sales related is I am a trained scientist. Um, and so I think about things from sort of a process and inputs and outputs perspective, which is called systems thinking. And that's kind of the lens with which I approach everything that I do. And I think this is why I love the way that you think, the way you approach uh, new business so much. And it's interesting because you say that and you do that, you do apply that very process oriented lens, but you couple that with incredible soft skills. Like, you know, I don't want to like, I, I think it was on the MarTech podcast. We called it the uh, Liston Witherill butt kissing hour. I don't want to turn this episode <laughs> into that, but um, it, I have nothing is, to do with that, by the way. I there, just want to make sure that's noted. <laughs> there is um, this level of a suave in this podcast posture that you bring to a sales call, I think is just uh, really cool. So I, I want to dig into 
the first thing that I think is most compelling is your approach to sales. Like you don't come across as a salesperson. The way you approach sales, the way you think about sales is different than what you would typically hear in a sales mastermind, in a conversation or round table about agency new business and sales. And mm -hmm. core to that approach is this idea of serve, don't sell. Could you explain to our listeners what the core thesis is behind serve, don't sell? I will, but I, I want to um, actually ask you a question, which sure. is, you say the way I approach it is not what you would typically expect to hear in a round table or in, in other sales advice. What would you typically expect to hear? Uh, the conversation is about how do we get more revenue, get more clients, get more work. Mm. And there's mm -hmm. a big idea that you write about on your blog, which is you approach every sales conversation with the thesis that this client is not a good fit. And you are mm. essentially trying to like prove that they're not a good fit as quickly as possible. And it's these little right. adjustments to how you approach a sales conversation, how you approach a sales process that I think are they just come out of left field for a lot of people. but. I'm seeing it work and it makes perfect sense when you understand how it all works together. So I'd love to start to dissect this new way of thinking about things because I think it's really powerful. So uh, here's something you don't hear a lot in sales. In the scientific method, um, one of the first things you'd have to do is create a hypothesis. And if you want to, your, your goal isn't to prove the hypothesis correct, it's to prove it false. And if you can't prove it false, then you've got a pretty good hypothesis, right? And which is to say an explanation of how the world works. In this case, in sales, a lot of people will approach the sale with sort of a me first attitude, right? It's all about how can I make more revenue? How can I get a new project? How can I pay my employees, whatever your perspective is, how can I get commission if I'm in a sales focused role? Um, the problem with that is your prospects know it, right? So there's nothing wrong with having self-interest. That's like who we are. That's, I mean, we're evolved for that for many good reasons. But if you're approaching your sale in a you first uh, kind of posture, your prospects are going to know it and that's going to signal to them that they can't trust you as much as they could otherwise. Whereas if I show up and I'm trying to find reasons why this deal isn't going to work out, um, that builds trust, right? For good reason, because I actually am like, I legitimately am trying to find reasons why it can't work. Now, this isn't to say, our goal is to show up and just be like, you know, pessimistic and have a bunch of bad news. I'm not saying that. Assuming you're targeting the right people, you should be having conversations with people who could, at least in theory, be a relatively close match to your ideal client profile, right? Assuming they do have that, there's a bunch of reasons why they wouldn't work with you. You're too expensive. The timing is off. They don't like your approach or your point of view. Um, the t type of work or the style of work that you do isn't a perfect match. So like in the agency world, right? Maybe some people see themselves as having stodgy brands and they don't like flashy design or they don't like, um, <laughs> what I would consider good design, right? They're not going to be a fit for me and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I've dodged a bullet if I get them out of my pipeline. So that's kind of the first thing. How do I approach it? I think about it in terms of not just what will it take to get a sale, which is a bunch of things have to line up. I think about this, another way to think about it is like slalom skiing, right? You're having to go around all of these gates and if you miss one gate, you're disqualified. And sales can be a lot like that. Like you're going downhill at full speed and you have to <laughs> ski around all of the gates in the right order and if you miss one, you're pretty much screwed. Um, and so what you're looking for is to end it as soon as possible. Um, if you do that, and if you're targeting the right people, you're going to find whatever's left over are great opportunities for you and your firm. 
Hey, it's Marcel here from Parakeeto, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode and for being a listener of the show. We really appreciate you being here, and I hope you're getting a ton of value out of the episode. And if you are, do us a huge favor and leave us a review on iTunes, subscribe to the show, and share it with somebody else who you think might get some value. And if you are enjoying this kind of content, then I highly recommend you check out Parakeeto.com, where we've got tons of other free content like this and a bunch of great downloadable resources to help you grow your agency like the Agency Profitability Toolkit, which is loaded with a bunch of great trainings, templates, cheat sheets, and other resources to help you improve your profitability fast, and it's helped hundreds of other agencies just like yours do the same. So with that, I'll let you get back to it. Enjoy the rest of the episode. So this has been really cool to on because I'm, I'm of course on the profitability operation side and the thing that i love is when we can say this is how we do something this is how much mm-hmm. it costs this is the process here's how long it's going to take we present a scope and a process and the client says yes i i agree that that is the right way to do this or i trust your expertise to guide me through a process that's going to get me to the right outcome and of course with that posture and with that process of making sure that all those things line up it helps operations so much and all the things that typically lead to uh, scope creep and unprofitable projects and bad client relationships like there being misalignment on those things or having the client start to feel like they have to take over and dictate the scope those things start to go away. Now, of course, underlying all of this is this kind of baseline assumption that in order to approach a sales process like that, there has to be a level of confidence that for every opportunity that we turn away because we know that it's not a good fit or we let the client know, hey, we don't think we're the best agency to work with you because of these reasons, there is another one behind it that is likely to be a good fit. And so having a process that is generating ample amounts of pipelines so you can take this approach is a prerequisite. And we spent a lot of time talking about that on the show, so I don't want to spend the whole episode on that, but what are your thoughts on how we get an agency to that place? What are some of the keys? Yeah, so I haven't been publishing much on my blog lately, but one post that I've been meaning to write is why I took the job at Goldfront, because like I've been asked by a lot of people you know, like I have a successful podcast and I'm relatively known and why would I take a job? And I think Goldfront has a few things going for it that are not impossible for other people to copy, but they're a lot harder to execute in practice than they are for me to say, right? So I'll just go ahead and say them and you can do what you will with it. Number one is the book of business and the portfolio of work that we have to show is like top notch, right? So that's number one. If I'm going to go prospect anybody or try to build pipeline, one of the first things they're going to do if they're even remotely interested in talking to me is go look at essentially like, can I believe what this guy's saying about how good this firm is or like, what have they done? That's what they want to know. So that's number one is sort of the proof of our work. And the nice thing about working for a design and brand focused agency is the work is so visual. It's easy for me to show it versus if I'm selling my sales consulting services, right? There's nothing I can really show you outside of like graphs and charts and sort of theories. Like there's, it's not as tangible, if that makes sense. So that's number one. I think another thing that um, is really important is your positioning. So every, I mean, look, when I worked at WRA, it was called when we sold the biology services, um, you know, they said what every other firm said and what most professional services firms say, whether you're an agency or something else, which is we have the best people, we have the most experience, we've completed X hundred or thousand projects, Um, everybody is certified and it's like, okay, those are all table stakes. Like no one's going to hire you if you don't have that stuff. Right. So like, that's just to get a seat at the table. Now, if you want to get picked, you got to give a good reason to be picked. And so Goldfront has a strong positioning that is intriguing and sort of piques curiosity, um, but also is meaningful in terms of it speaking to all of the things that we actually sell and provide. Um, so those are, those are a few things. The, the last there's, I mean, we could have like five episodes about this, but the last two things I want to say is your targeting has to be very good. 
So any marketing or especially if you're doing any outbound sales, which I don't know if you've talked about on the air that we do that at Goldfront and it works for us. And most agency owners will tell you that can never work. And I can tell you all the reasons why they're wrong and they're just not doing it right. But it really comes down to your targeting. Your addressable market in any given month may only be 50 prospects, right? But (laughs) how many do you have to land in a year for that to make a huge difference for your firm? Not many, right? Less than one a month, I'm sure. So the targeting has to be good. And then there's just a unavoidable part of this, which is a ton of manual effort has to be put into this in order to execute it week after week after week for years for it to be successful. So I think that's a good maybe surface level answer. I I agree with that synopsis. Like, I think the positioning is definitely very powerful. And, you know, Mm -hmm. for those of you that are inevitably going to go to Goldfront's website after you listen to this episode, or maybe you're on there right now, like the, you know, we're solving this category design and then the execution problem. So there's a very specific problem for a very specific type of company. And there's almost nobody else that's doing, you know, this type of work or solving this type of problem. And to our knowledge, there's no one that's doing it the way that we're doing it. So like, that's really compelling. And it just so happens that we picked a problem that typically companies that are, have a huge market opportunity and have a lot of funding are trying to solve. So that, that works out nicely as well. But fundamentally, I think what's really awesome there is like, it's a very clear problem. It's very easy for us to identify who needs to solve that problem, who it's probably top of mind for. And therefore, to your point, when we, I think the two channels that are working really well for Goldfront are outbound because we can identify these companies, send them a very compelling message that says, Hey, we've observed these things about you. It seems like you're challenged with this. We'd love to have a conversation. And they're like, yeah, (laughs) that you're exactly right. And the Mm -hmm. second is the investors that are giving them, writing them a check, helping them put together a round and talking about this vision. And we've, you know, managed to build some great relationships there and, you know, slow down there, buddy. We don't want to give away too much, but yes, (laughs) referrals are an important source of business for us. Yeah. So like it's understanding fundamentally, right? What are those channels? And then being really, really clear about who is it and what's the problem. And I think what's so powerful about that is like it empowers other people to talk about it. Right. When you can say this is what we do, somebody else can then take that and sell you. Right. And I think also, I mean, there's like, again, we can have a whole dedicated discussion about the art of direct response, marketing and sales, which is, it's like, that's what cold email outreach and outbound uh, email is, is just direct response. And the key always is to understand the person you're reaching out to and what matters to them. And I can promise you, no one cares about how awesome the last logo is that you did. No one cares about how awesome the website is or what CMS you use. No one gives a shit about that, right? So it's really about understanding what's going on in their world and what matters to them and only speaking to those things. And then the, okay, so how do you do it? How do you solve my problems? That's when you can talk about yourself. But you got to understand the problem first in order to get into the conversation. And I think this is what was so surprising for me when I actually got to sit in on these calls. Right. Mm -hmm. I had this assumption that selling these, you know, very big deals to very big companies was going to be vastly Mm -hmm. different than what I had experienced selling much smaller deals to much smaller companies. And I was Mm -hmm. astounded at how little of the conversation was about these things and how much of the conversation was just about the story, the story of why we were the right firm and why we were Mm -hmm. right for them and the story of how they were going to get to where they're going to go at a high level. And that was the majority of what needed to be clear. And all the details were much less important than I expected. And I was really, really surprised by that. Yes, indeed. I, you know, I, I said to, um, uh, Josh, the, the owner of Goldfront, I said, you know, isn't it funny that clients are making decisions like, you know, multiple six figure decisions to buy our services based on like an hour to two hours with us and a slide deck, like, doesn't, isn't that kind of weird? Um, but yeah, you're right. It, it really does come down to the story that we're telling mm. um, and how much it relates to someone and how we can relate it back to them. That is the key thing is to understand what's going on with them, what's important to them and how we can relate what we do 
to improving their situation so that we can rewrite the future of that story for them. So I want to dig into a little bit of, you know, for those that have started this positioning path, they've started getting the pipeline. Maybe they're at a place where there's more work coming in than they know what to do with. How do we make that transition to this way of thinking that is super counterintuitive of it's not about closing as much of that work as we can. It's now about trying to identify the the right fits within that. What are some of the keys to like really leveraging the fact that now we have more work than we know what to do with to actually create the impact and the leverage for the agency that it it should? Well, um, I don't know if you've had Blair ends on here, but one of the things he likes to talk about is you know, wouldn't you rather have half the clients and they pay you double the amount? Um, and you make the same amount of money, but like, what a better lifestyle and it'd be way more profitable. Right. So that's kind of the first thing I think about is like, I think everybody needs to think about what is their business model. So some people have a business model where profit and scale come through hiring as many people as possible. Um, that's not my preference, right? I'd rather be sell the premium thing that's exclusive and forces us to put limits on our capacity, um, but we can charge a lot more for it. So that's that will have an impact on how you treat your pipeline for sure. Um, the other thing is to really understand what is it, what is what you're doing worth to your client? So this is maybe something I do better than other people, or maybe I'm overly confident. I don't know. You could tell me Marcel, but I generally look at the work we do for our clients. And I think we should probably be paid at least 10 times more than we're being paid right now. Even after all the accolades you gave me in the beginning, I think we're severely underpaid for what we give to our clients. That gives me a lot of, um, a lot of confidence in the process because it's not hard for me to tell the story of like, especially in startup land, right? You are worth, I can go see approximately $2 billion today and average exit in your industry is $10 billion. And so if I'm asking for even 5 million, that's like chump change, right? And we're, our contracts aren't on that level yet. So that gives me a lot of confidence to go into these conversations and really not fight for us, but just confidently say, I know we're worth it, right? And if you didn't think we were worth it, you already would have gone on and talked to someone else and we wouldn't be having this second or third conversation, right? So the more, that's the other thing, the more invested someone is in the process. I'm talking to busy people, C-level people, CMOs, CEOs, um, just to get them to show up somewhere is hard. That gives me confidence, right? Because I'm realistic about like, how is this person spending their time and why? Now, I wish we had more time to dig into the nuances of some of the ideas that are nested within this. But I think this is a big idea that I'm hoping lots of you listening want to go deeper on. And I encourage you to do that. So listen, you've got a book coming out. You've already got some amazing content published on this. Where can people that want to dive deep into your world and into your mind go and find that information? Go to my website, listen, L-I-S-T-O-N dot I-O. Um, you can read all my past articles there. There are hundreds, um, sign up for my newsletter. It's totally free. And the book, how to sell creativity will be out very soon. Um, and the last thing is you can listen to my podcast, modern sales. And we will have links to all of those resources in the show notes. I highly encourage you all to go check it out. It is some of the best content on the internet, like listen, Blair, uh, that I put you guys up at the very top of the thought leadership on this topic. So do go and dive in. And with that, listen, thank you so much for being on the show today. And uh, I'll see you in the office. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Marcel. Well, that's all for today's episode, but it doesn't have to be the end of your learning journey. Make sure you subscribe to the show so you never miss another episode. And check us out at parakeeto.com where we've got tons of other amazing content and free resources to help you improve your profitability. With that, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next episode. Are you still, are you still here? You're leaving us a comment, aren't you? Yeah, or maybe you're subscribing to the show over here, or maybe you're watching the next episode, or maybe you're typing paraketo.com into your address bar. Now you're like, 